Hello and welcome to a look at Jensen's Alpha with me, Andy Duncan, here at finlingo.com. Alpha, created by Michael Jensen in 1968, is the holy grail of fund managers. It's also an absolute measure of investment desirability. So what exactly is it? Well, it's the difference between what an investment should get, according to the theoretical security market line, and what it actually does get in a real market. Here we've got that security market line. Go watch the video. We have a market portfolio where beta always equals 1, and this returns 10%. We've also got a risk-free rate of 2%. From these, we can stitch together the security market line for all values of beta on the x-axis. All assets should now have an expected return on the y-axis. And this expected return should sit somewhere on this line. If a real investment's off the line, then you've found some alpha. Here's that security market line equation. The expected market return of any asset is the risk-free rate plus beta times the difference between the market's return and that risk-free rate. So what are we expecting if an asset has a beta of 1.5? Well, if we run the equation, the asset should deliver us 14%. But what if the real-world return of the asset is actually 16%? Well, now you've found some positive alpha. We can tell just by looking at it that it's got a gap of 2%. But let's modify the original security market line equation just to prove it. So alpha equals whatever we actually have minus whatever the security market line tells us we should have. We already know the security market line bits, giving us an answer of 14%. Now we put in 16% for the actual return, and so the calculated alpha is a positive 2%. No surprises so far. You buy the stock because it's returning 2% more than it should, and so it's probably underpriced. And hopefully you beat everyone else to it, because if all the fund managers do the same thing, the stock price will shoot up. And then this reduces the stock's relative return until it drops back down again to a measly 14%. If the actual if your return is now 12%, 2% below what it should be, you'd short the stock. You've now got a negative alpha of minus 2%. You sell this for a high price because it's overpriced probably, then when the price comes down you buy it back at that lower level to cover yourself off. Again, as you and all the other fund managers sell this off, the asset price drops, and so its relative return increases. This self-leveling system drives the return back up to 14%. Basically, all stocks all the time are buzzing around the security market line. Coming back to this equation, so long as we know a stock's actual return, its beta, the market return, and the risk-free rate, we can always work out an alpha. So let's try a question then on Finlingo. Here, we've got an actual return of 12.39%, a risk-free rate of 3.34%, a stock beta of 1.16%, and the expected market return of 13.49%. Let's move those numbers across to the spreadsheet. So we take off the risk-free rate, multiply by beta, add on the risk-free rate again, then take away from the actual return. We've now got an alpha of minus 2.72%, which is a negative alpha, so maybe we'd short this stock. Click it on Finlingo, and we're done. Head on over now to finlingo.com to get an infinite number of questions on how to calculate Jensen's alpha. You'll find this and hundreds of other CFA-style questions, including questions on economics and ethics. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.